Hey, welcome to another few minutes of Beep. Today we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at some information that is online and use it to sort of like create a little percussion synth. Um, but what we're also going to do is kind of see how we can tweak a sound into play by using some fairly simple adjustments. So to begin with, we're going to take a look at one of the coolest resources online. It's Sound on Sound Magazine's their Synth Secret series. It was a series that they ran from, uh, it looks like 1999 all the way through 2004. It's an awful lot of uh, information about how you basically create different kinds of synthetic uh, tools and they do a variety of different emulations of different kinds of sounds. The one that we're going to look at right now is uh, parts 31 and 32, specifically 32, where they begin the discussion of percussion synthesis. Um, part 31 basically has all the theory behind it. Number 32 though is kind of interesting in that it wants to create sort of like a kettle drum type sound or a tune percussion sound, but it does it using either a DX7 synth or, more interesting to us, the Korg MS-20. Now the Korg MS-20 is pretty valuable because it's relatively simple, it's modular, so its matchup with Beep is going to be pretty straightforward. So if we take a look at this example, what we see is we have two VCOs, mixers and all kinds of stuff that we can use to sort of like create a patch that emulates what they're doing. So we're going to start off doing the basic architecture of a Korg MS-20 and uh, do some basic setup and then we're going to see how we tweak it so that it kind of gets the kettle drum sound that was in, provided as an example in this article. So first of all we're going to go into beep, we're going to select uh, oscillators, we're going to select the standard oscillator, and we're going to take a look at uh, putting together something that simulates uh, the architecture of an MS-20. So we're going to go with an oscillator, we're going to have a little mixer because it mixes a variety of different things, and then the MS-20 is unique in that it has two filters. So first we have a high-pass filter, so we'll take the high pass filter. Next we have a low pass filter. So we'll take a low pass filter. And then finally we have the output section, which is a VCA, which we get from the levels section. And we'll send that to the output, which we'll use the standard stereo output that we've been using for all of these. So if I start connecting these, they all go in kind of a row. The oscillator goes into the first channel of the mixer. The output of the mixer goes into the signal input of the high-pass filter. The output of that goes into the signal of the low-pass filter. The output of that goes into the signal input of the VCA and uh, the DSP system. And so this is like the most basic layout of the oscillator. Now, the problem is with the VCA here, we're not going to hear anything unless we're triggering it. So what we're going to do is kind of set up a little triggering system as well. So first of all, we're going to go into sequencers. We're going to grab the global transport. Stick it way over here. And uh, we're also going to take a gate sequencer. Because th since this is a percussion thing, a little gate sequencer is going to give us a nice little uh, functionality for that. And so what we're going to do is now take uh, the output of the gate sequencer. We're going to, yeah, let's, let's just hide it over here a little bit. And we're going to also have an envelope that turns the VCA on and off. So if we take uh, an envelope, we're going to use a simple AD envelope. The AD envelope just gives us uh, attack and decay. We're going to run that from the gate sequencer. And if we uh, get all our settings right here by turning up the signal mixer, we hear a little gated sequence. Now, this isn't very percussion-like, so we're going to drop the attack to be a nice little hit on the front end. 
a nice little decay in the back end. And I'm just going to just switch up this sequence to be a little bit more interesting. There we go. So now we have a nice little sequence going that's giving us a little, uh, a little percussive sound. So what we're going to do is now take a look at the article and I'll just give you the overview. First of all, the assumption is that we have this oscillator providing us with the core tone of a kettle drum. So we're going to use a triangle wave which has light harmonics in the high end. And we're going to detune it, in this case, to minus 24. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so you can kind of hear where for a kettle drum type sound, that's a nice low tone. Turn up the input a little bit. And then what uh, it suggests there is to have the high pass and the low pass filter both set around three. Now three doesn't mean much for us, but I think we can figure out that that represents a relatively low setting for both. And finally, if we take a look at the article and if we take a look at the settings for the filters, it has the high pass filter with a pretty high resonance or peak setting and the low pass filter with still a pretty high setting. So we're going to ramp up those resonance settings. We're going to set the high pass filter to a very high setting and the resonance on the low pass filter to reasonably uh, or a middle-ish kind of setting. So now we can kind of hear how it already does have kind of a drummy sound, although it sounds a little bit more like a kick drum. Uh, if we take a look at the article again, the other thing we see is that he, is that there is some use of the envelope controlling the low-pass filter. So let's go ahead and uh, take some of our envelope and have it also control the low-pass filter CV2. And if we turn up CV2, we hear it kind of rounds out the front end in a nice way. It's pretty cool. So now we can kind of tweak these filter settings and get something that sounds like a nice little percussive sound. Now the next thing in the article that he talks about is using the ring modulator of the MS-20 to uh, basically give us the enharmonic sound of the inside of the drum. So this is sort of like the core tone of the drum. To get the enharmonic or, or slightly more chaotic sound, what we, he wants us to do is use the ring mod. Now there's not a ring modulator in the core beep set, but uh, in looking around on the web, I found this article on the sadly named Gear Sluts site that talks about the MS-20 ring mod and how uh, it's an XOR between pulse waveforms and it's probably similar to multiplying pulse waveforms by each other. That kind of piqued my interest and it was an opportunity for us to take a look at, it, at a cool concept which is using the output of one uh, of uh, beat modules uh, but using standard max objects to manipulate them. So I'm going to option drag my oscillator over. I'm going to use the pulse waveform and uh, I'm going to use a standard max operator which is uh, it's the multiplication one but it's going to be between two audio signals so we have to put a tilde in there. In this object now, if I feed it the signals from the two oscillators, should give me a ring modulated sound. So if I now lock my patch and turn this up, uh, sure enough, I get this nice clangorous sound that's typical of a ring modulator. Now, what I want to do is in the patch, the way they portray it, they have it scaled a little bit higher, like one octave higher than the stock VCO. So let's try that. Let's put it at a negative 12 and hear what it sounds like. Well, it sounds like kind of a rougher version of the first, of the oscillator by itself. But if I slightly detune it, it gets a lot rougher. And that in combination with the original tone allows me to have either a very clear tonal sound 
or a really rough kind of randomish sound. And so I can now play by play with the the overall sound of my track by kind of toying around with how much of the fundamental I want and how much of this kind of clangorous ring mod sound. And I can kind of tweak it. You hear that there's a lot of different kind of sonic variations that we can use. So I'm going to stick with that for now. Now I'm going to increase the decay a little bit. And I just have sort of kind of a big thick drummy sound. Now in order to kind of continue following the, uh, the sound layout of this, we pretty much have done the standard MS-20 layout. The one thing is we have a little bit of patching where he basically takes the pink noise, runs it through the signal processor just so that he can use the bandpass filter, and then mixes that in. So basically it's adding noise to add even a little bit more chaos into the sound of the, um, of the drum. So what we're going to do is unlock our patch, go to the random section and select noise, drag a noise object here, and then also we're going to get a bandpass filter. So if we go into filter, there's this thing called the VBWBP, which is a variable bandwidth uh, bandpass filter. We're going to select it, and we have to do a little bit of setup on this. So first of all, let me move this stuff over. Secondly, let's connect the noise to the signal input, signal output to the third input of my mixer, and lock the patch so we can set this up. Now the uh, Sound on Sound article talks about using pink noise. Secondly, it wants to use a band pass filter. And now if we turned off the other inputs and turn up this input, we can hear the effect of the noise. And just finding a way to kind of dial in something that responds nicely to our filter settings. We can see that after around 160 hertz here, it kind of sounds like an activated shell. And again, it has kind of that randomness that seems to work uh, as part of a percussion synth. So now I've got this noise-based source coming into input 3. I have my ring modulated input into input 2. And I have the standard uh, oscillator coming into input 1. So this is sort of the layout as, uh, as described in the article. And what you'll find is that there are a couple of things you can tweak to get a really interesting variety of sounds. So first of all, if I play around with my AD envelope, I can get everything from kind of a low sounding click to sort of like the kick drum from Doom, right? Uh, I'm going to keep it around uh, 350 milliseconds to kind of give that big rattly kettle drum like sound. The next thing though is that by tweaking the uh, semi-tone offsets for the filters, I can really change the sense of what's happening in terms of my drum sound. And then finally, I have these three different sound sources that I can mix to get really a variety, interesting variety of sounds. I have my noise bass system, my ring mod bass system, and again, changing the oscillation can really change the sound of that. And then I have my original tone. Playing around with the relative settings of these three different sonic inputs in combination with the dual filter system and our gating can give me a lot of variation in sound. So this is kind of the process of taking something from the Sound on Sound article and turning it into a max patch using mostly beep, but in one particular instance, 
uh, using a standard max object to get it done. I hope you found this useful, interesting, exciting, or at least not boring. And uh, I hope you give uh, this patch a try. I think you'll find it really interesting to put it together, to play around with it, and to see how you can make your own very unique and idiosyncratic uh, drum sounds for your own use. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you soon. Bye.